Hello YouTube, this is the Science of Love and Happiness Part 2. Disorders, where's the line uh, between disorder and romantic love? It's very interesting, my brain scanning partner, Dr. Lucy Brown from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine just made a speech last week to a group of people who are studying bipolar problems, which is manic and depressive. And in fact, there's a great deal of resemblance in some of the brain structure between people who are very manic and people who are madly in love. And so the difference, I think, between somebody who's just manic and somebody who's in love is not so much the feeling of the mania, but what you're attaching it to. So my guess is, and I don't study mania, but certainly mania is part of romantic love, no question about it. I, I would go so far as to say that if you're not manic, you're probably not really in that early stage of intense romantic love. But what is it that determines why we fall in love with one person rather than another? Like many of us, Helen Fisher also became intrigued by this question and began to investigate in collaboration with a leading internet dating site. She concludes that when you take into account individual brain chemistry, it's not always as simple as opposites attract. There's a good deal of you tend to fall in love with somebody uh, from the same socioeconomic background, uh, same ethnic background, same general level of intelligence, same general level of good looks, same goals, uh, same religious and social values, etc. So in that way, similarity attracts. But I want to know if basic body chemistry, your basic genetics, your basic hormone system drives you towards some people rather than others. You know, people will say, well, we had chemistry. Well, what do they mean by that? So I began to look into the brain literature to see if there were any traits, behavioral traits, that were linked with any particular brain systems. And as it turns out, there's four brain systems that each one of them is linked with a whole constellation of personality traits, the dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen systems. And I created a questionnaire to see to what degree you express the traits linked with each one of these systems. I put them on the dating site, and 13 million people have taken this questionnaire in 40 countries. And so I'm able to study not only which traits people express, but who they're naturally drawn to. And as it turns out, in two <coughs> cases, similarity attracts. In the other two cases, opposites attract. If you're very expressive of the traits linked with dopamine, you tend to be creative, curious, spontaneous, energetic, novelty seeking, risk taking, mentally flexible. And these people want somebody like themselves. They want somebody who's gonna leap off the couch and go to New Guinea to, to see what it's like there. Or at least go to the opera or to the theater or just to novel things together. So people who are expressive of the dopamine system I call explorers and explorers tend to seek other explorers, people like themselves. If you're very expressive of the serotonin system, I call these people builders. They tend to be conventional, traditional, cautious, but not scared. They tend to be frugal often. They follow the rules. They respect authority. They tend to be detail-oriented. Uh, they're often more religious. Uh, they tend to be quite loyal. They can, often are very modest. And they also seek somebody like themselves. The traditional builder wants another traditional builder. In those two cases, similarity attracts. In the other two cases, opposites attract. Uh, high testosterone people go for high estrogen, and high estrogen go for high testosterone. So the kind of person who's high testosterone, I call them the director. They tend to be analytical, logical, direct, decisive, tough-minded, uh, skeptical, good at things like math or engineering or mechanics or computers. And sure enough, they're very attracted to somebody who's high estrogen, somebody who's compassionate, verbally skilled, socially skilled, emotionally expressive, uh, quite intuitive, imaginative, and sees the big picture. So people will say, well, you know, do opposites attract? The answer is, it depends on who you are. So with that sort of information, uh, is it possible to predict what relationships will work and what won't work? I think that almost any kind of relationship can work. It's just they're going to have different kinds of problems. But now, for example, I mean, let's say you're the very high uh, dopamine type, the explorer. You love novelty. Uh, you're very creative. You're optimistic. You're very, uh, always want to do something new. And sure enough, you go out with an awful lot of girls or boys, and you get into your mid-40s, and you say to yourself, you know, I need to settle down. And suddenly, 
the builder, the traditional, conventional individual is offering stability and, and you fall in love with the person. Uh, you have two children with the person and five years later, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to get very bored or you're going to say, well, you know, without the stability of this human being, I'll end up in jail. So I don't ever want to predict because, you know, I studied the biology of behavior and that's only part of who you are. We all grew up in certain kinds of homes. Uh, we had certain expectations. We had certain uh, failures and, and triumphs that no personality test is going to measure. And so I can tell you a lot about who you are biologically, but I can't. I don't know your childhood. So there's um, great joys and great sorrows in any combination. But I certainly can say when I see that there are two people who are directors, very tough-minded, uh, very decisive, poorer people skills, very ambitious, and I see a man and a woman who are both the director type, I think, boy, they're going to have some problems. A, they probably have a very good sex life because the testosterone system is linked with sexuality, but uh, they don't have good people skills as well as others. Uh, they're probably going to be workaholics, both of them. Probably won't see much of each other. And when they do see each other, they may compete with each other. <coughs> now, if you love competition, it might work perfectly. But I, there's no question about it that I would anticipate when I hear that a certain type of person is going out with another certain type of person, I anticipate already that what some of those problems could be. So whilst uh, most people understand and are familiar with the concept of romantic love, not everybody has been able to find it or has experienced it. Why is that? It's interesting. I, I don't know why it is that some people are more susceptible to romantic love than others. I have um, asked on various questionnaires how many times have you been in love and I find that people who are the high testosterone type are less likely to fall in love all the time. And I had anticipated that the high dopamine type, because they're so novelty seeking and risk taking and charismatic, would fall in love all the time. But what I found is that the high estrogen type were the most likely to fall in love often. But you know, you can fall in love often and not feel it as intensely. So the kind of person who says, I've only been in love once in my life, it could be a deep, profound, romantic experience for that person. So it's not as how many, how many times you fall in love, but how you feel when you fall in love. And just about everybody on the planet experiences it at some point. You know, I think it's a basic brain system, like the fear system, and it can happen at any time. In fact, the youngest person I ever met who was in love was a two and a half year old boy. And as his mother said, when a certain little girl came over to his house, all he would do was sit next to her and stroke her hair. And as soon as she left, uh, the little girl left, he would be depressed for about an hour and a half. And the oldest person I've met is 78. Who's, in fact, I've actually heard about people in their 90s who were suddenly in a nursing home and fell madly in love with their nurse in the nursing home. So it's a brain system that can be triggered at any age. Just lastly, how has studying love scientifically affected you personally? In some ways, it's been a great help. Uh, there's been times when I just sort of fell for a man and then found out that he was going out with somebody else and I knew perfectly well that he was not going to change his focus, that I might as well not try. Because when you're madly in love with one person, you know, anything can come along and you can't get that person's attention. So bottom line is it's helped me to some degree, but not totally. I mean, you know, when you're madly in love with somebody and I remember times in my life when I've had to you know, I've said, don't go call him, Helen. Don't go call him, Helen. And I see myself walking towards the phone and dialing his number. And so the bottom line is, you know, you can know every single ingredient in a piece of chocolate cake. But then you sit down and you eat that cake and you still feel that magic. You still feel that joy. So you can know a great deal about love and just be like every other person on the planet and get that same old joy when it happens to you. Dr. Helen Fisher, anthropologist and research professor at Rutgers University. She and Professor Ed Diener were both visiting Australia for the 2013 Happiness and Its Causes conference. And I'll put a link to the conference and the books written by my two guests on the All in the Mind website. Go to abc.net.au slash Radio National where you'll also find transcripts and the audio of all our programs. Leave a message for us there and join us on Facebook and Twitter too.
Today's sound engineer is Stephen Tilley. I'm Lynn Malcolm. Thanks for your company. Join me next week at the same time. But you're in love with me. But now... Well, there you go. The science of love and happiness. On Warbles on a Lot channel. There's got to be some irony in that. Um, if it's any use to your hexy base, I hope that helps. Warbles on a Lot to YouTube. Ciao.